something that you will want to have a calculator out uh, beside you today when we do some calculations. I'm just going to do a rough introduction to this so that way you get some time at the very end today to kind of work on the, the pre-set that I assigned you. That was your page 396 that I gave you yesterday. Uh, that's due Monday, keep that in mind. Um, logarithms today is something that I remember very vividly when I was in, in school that they didn't really discuss a lot. It wasn't, it wasn't in any major class when we actually talked about it. Um, the, the way that I first learned it is I learned it in Calc 1 when I took it my senior year. And it was one of those things that was just thrown in the deep end. I had no idea what it was. I didn't know what the button was for, how to type it in correctly. Uh, we're going to look at that today. Um, and I want to make sure that you understand the purpose of doing it, because it, it is actually somewhat useful for, uh, for a certain type of problem. So uh, the goal today, we're going to look at the actual formula itself to talk about what an actual logarithm is. And then um, the goal is after we're after we're in to the middle of it, the goal is to look at a few examples and to actually look at how to use the calculator to help us figure it out. No, stop. And this will this will actually be helpful for um, the investment problems because now we can actually solve for a time to when we know like certain accounts in, um, are vested. We're going to look at that today. That will be one of my examples that we're going to do when we get the, the actual practical uses. Because I'm trying to I'm trying to give you. Um, some actual like practical use things for this chapter. Um, I know some of those other chapters are it's tough to like see certain things that are useful, but this one in particular is one that is is used probably more often than not in a lot of uh, pre-calc and a lot of uh, life situations, especially with banking and money. Uh, so we're going to try to look at the, the actual uses of it today, uh, which I'm going to try to keep going with that throughout the sections. Now some of those sections will be a little more difficult than others, but I think this one in particular fits really well with the stuff we previously did. Uh, so the formula, let's talk about what a logarithm is. Okay, all right, uh, so the goal here. A logarithm is a big fancy word for a way of um, a way of calculating an exponent, like finding the actual power that's missing. So what I mean by that is, let's, let's take a look at a problem that's kind of easy. So like two to some power Log. makes the number eight. Three. Yeah, most people can guess that. It's, it's a small enough number that, yeah, if you guess yeah, numbers. Please, all yeah. sophomores are reminded you should be in the auditorium at this time for your large group. All sophomores yeah. refer to the report yeah. to the auditorium. Okay, um, but anyway, uh, we're, we're plugging in numbers, like plug in one, plug in a two, plug in a three, and eventually, <laughs> eventually you figure out that three would actually give you eight, because the power means you're taking the base times itself. And so you're trying to figure out how it works. Question. Type in log 2, 8, and then equals 6. Yeah, so that's what we're going to look at. So yeah, you're absolutely right. So the, the trick is, how do we get to this answer, especially on one that's really weird and difficult? Like this was easy. I tried to pick an easy one. So you kind of knew the answer before we start. Uh, we knew it was 3, 2 to the third power is 8, 2 times 2 times 2. So when you type this in, um, how we actually do this, um, it's kind of a, I, I call it a circle method of trying to figure out um, how to write the problem as a logarithm. Is it kind of like a vision? No, yeah, it's, like it's kind of my own like little like method for how to remember it. All right, so 2 to the x equals 8. All right, so how it works um, when I actually do this problem, I start with the base. I always start with the base number. Um, this is considered a base. This is an exponent. Um, this is the, the actual result of the actual... This is the actual result of actually calculating the exponent. All right, so how it works, when you actually do this, we're going to do this little circle method where you start with the base, you loop around, and you end with the exponent. Oh, how do we just, so, why don't you just go up? So when you actually type this in, it's going to be logarithm 
And the base comes first, and this base you're going to put it as a little small number. It's, it's what they call a subscript number. Are you ready? Um, we'll, we'll, I'll show you how to type it in your cup here in a minute. And then, so it's a subscript number, and then the next number that I went to when I was going through the circle was the 8. That was the second number that so I was hitting. Eight. So log base 2 of 8, that's how we say it, so log base 2 of 8. Of eight. That's how we. That's how we pronounce it out loud. Uh, and that equals the exponent. So what I want you to know is that logarithm on your calculator. And I'll show you how to type it in because uh, certain calculators can type it in differently than others. What a logarithm actually does is it's a big fancy way of finding an exponent. That's all it's used for. Okay. Uh, that's what I was trying to hint at here. It's trying to find an exponent. And so when you actually see this, what you should be thinking in your head is that that all this is is a power. That's what this stands for, this whole mess. It's a power on something. And so there's a way of like going from here and back and back and forth uh, using that same circle method. But I want to show you how to type it in so you get the right answer. Okay? So when we're typing in log base 2 of 8, um, this is the way that I was, um, what I was taught when I was in Calc 1. That it's, it's called a change of base formula because right now. I remember Mr. God speaking of this. Yeah, most people can't type this in in, in a calculator. It's not it's it's not correct to, to actually type that. It's not. Um, there's slight few calculators that can when you hit the yes. log button. It allows you to type in two numbers and hit enter. And um, that, here's the problem. I don't have any clue of how to type it into that. I've I'll never. It out. Okay, so it's, it's, it's trial and error today. So it's it's stupid. Was stupid. All right. Now, now on, on my problem here, what we're going to do is we're going to change the base so we can actually type it in. So here's how I do it. You take the log of the large number, the 8, the eight and then the, the small number, uh, it basically look, it looks, by like the log it look, yeah, it looks like it's falling. Oh so it's, it's falling to the bottom of a fraction and what? becomes its own logarithm. And so this is actually what I'm typing in. So I'm typing Three. log 8. You're going to divide by log 2, and that should give you 3. Okay. And so that's that's the whole goal. And this number you're getting should be the power that we were trying to find. Okay, now, um, so for uh, for your calculator, don't, I, think you, I think you have to type the 8 first, then hit log button of it, and then that will give you the top number, and then 2 and hit the log button, and then divide the two numbers later. Okay. Um, I don't... I don't know how to go like in order. I just yeah, find both and then I just divide them later. Yeah, this is a little so. I just go to the And it didn't work? Yeah. Okay. That's not bad. You can't use that on the machine. It's only too dumb. It says that on your website. Okay. Hey. All right. Let's talk about let's talk about the uses of it. Um, the reason the reason being is that Eventually, at some point, um, we need to figure out the power you can put on a number that gets you to something larger. What I mean by that is um, one of the problems we're going to be eventually getting into in the later sections is bacterial growth, decay. Well, the, the idea is what we're looking for is time, or we're looking for, yeah, half-life, or we're looking for like the amount of a substance that that's, was provided to us. It's like God. So, so, but uh, the idea here, what, what I want to cover is how do we actually type this and how do we use it? Um, so let, let me do an example of the, the vestment uh, problem that we did yesterday. So uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this continuously compounded from. Stop. Okay. So let's say that let's say that I had a certain savings account. Maybe more time. time. No, let's, let's go something more a little reasonable. But let's say, let's say that maybe you had... Maybe you had fifteen hundred bucks in your savings. Yeah, that's reasonable. Okay, because I'm not expecting people that have a hundred thousand dollars rounded. Okay, oh. I'm expecting something a smaller number. I'm just so, one based off of law. Now we know what rates are for for uh, for the the banks. Sometimes the rates change. I'll try to get a more accurate number for our local banks in here. Okay, guys, let's go. Stop. We gotta stop talking. Here. So uh, the rate that we're gonna use is half a percent, and what we're missing is the time. Okay, we're missing t. Time. And now the amount we're trying to get to is maybe over here. We're trying to see when can I maybe like if I invest this in my savings account, at what point down the road will it eventually grow to a point where maybe I can buy the object I want? Maybe that's what you're trying to figure a out. Million so, dollars. No, let's no. <laughs> can we do a million? No. Three. So let's go three thousand. <laughs> okay. All right. 
Let's just figure out the point where it will actually doubles. double. Is this continuously compounded? Yeah, this is continuously compounded. It works for any of them, really. Uh, any of the, the the interest problems we've done, except for simple. We don't have a we don't have a. All right. Now we're gonna just try to see like, is it reasonable to wait out? You know the time, it's still the and then in, then go purchase the item, or maybe you just need to take a small loan, and simple and then you can go buy. Loan. Then you can buy the yeah simple interest loan because maybe maybe that'll be the quickest way of doing it. All right, and maybe in the long run it'll just save you more money. All right. Okay. All right. So first, I'm gonna divide the fifteen hundred across. Because that number is attached to the E, so I'm going to divide it over so I get the E by itself. So when I divide this over, it gives me 2. Oh, that's how that works. <laughs> so I'm going to divide that over. Now, um, I'm going to rearrange this problem. I'm going to use uh, the symmetry property so that I can get the, the E on the other side. So E 0.005T equals 2. Uh, I always like to have the variable on the left. Now, how this works is we're going to take a, a logarithm. Uh, of both sides. Now, since it's using a base of E, um, they have a special type of logarithm that will automatically... Natural log means it's called the natural log. It only works for natural numbers like E. Uh, but you can take the log of both sides. It still works. But we just, to save point, uh, to save time, we just use the natural log key. And so here's the idea. I'm going to take, I'm going to do a little circle method, and we're going to like loop our way around. So the so it's basically log of base e, which I'll I'll write as the natural log here in a minute. So this this is my base, uh, this is my second number that I hit. So that's my big number, and this will equal the exponent. Because remember, when you take logs of items, that equals the power that's on it. Okay, so this this is technically the problem that I'm dealing with, right? Now, there's a shortcut, and you guys already heard it. Whenever you're taking a log of like a base of e, we have a shortcut for that. There's a button on your calculator. It's called L of n. That, oh that that's called the natural log key. Yeah, God, so it natural. basically represents this. So why is See, it L N? Um, good question. I think they're just going log of the natural number. Oh. I think L of that's right. L of N. You do N. say log so, base of log base two of eight. Yeah. So, but so you do say log, natural log. Percent. Log of the natural number. You say um, log of the natural number. So this is this is how this is the shortcut for how we can do it if it's the natural number. So we can just type in L N and that stands for the log of base. So I don't need to do that whole division idea. Um, I don't need to like separate it. And then you have to divide by this number. So to get T by itself, I got it. You're going to divide by the point zero zero five. So it'll be one thirty eight point six two nine four okay. three so six point zero zero five. And so you're taking natural log of two point zero zero five and say it again. One thirty eight point six two nine. Yeah. Oh, so, so wait, hold on. 138 point, give me like four or five decimal places. 0.629436 one. Okay, that's fine. 138 years. Let's go. Okay. That's, that's as you can tell, practical. it's it's not practical. If you so, have the cognitive view, it would be though. Okay. Um so in this in this particular case, like this is this is beneficial to see that, that you don't have enough money in the bank account that it would be reasonable to wait it out. Um, because the larger the money, the faster it grows. That's why they give you half a percent. It's not going to grow quickly unless you have a lot of money. They're trying to encourage you to put more money in the bank account. Okay, because it's it's good for both companies. It, um, now, question. Can we calculate for a million? Yeah, we'll do that here. All right. Now, this is 138. Now, the extra decimals, we can actually calculate what that is in years and in terms of days. Because you can take the point six two four three. We can take it times 365 to figure out what day it is. And then we can divide that into months, and we can figure out like down to like pretty much the minute, the second it's going to happen. That's, That's why it's it's important that you can do that. You have to factor in so, um, so this is over half a year. So we're already past the June July time frame. It could be August or September, um, just because of um, it's past point five, past the halfway of the year. Um, so like you can do like little calculations like that to figure it out. So, um, but. Do you see that like there's a purpose for doing this? Like it's nice to do that calculation because we can't outweigh that. You you will have to take out the simple loan if that's the item you want to purchase with that account. So or you have to dump more money in there to actually get it to grow faster. What I have a question. Yes. Okay. Question. What do you usually use for log algorithms or logarithms? It's this purpose. It's trying to figure out it's trying to figure out time investments in 
in money or trying to figure out bacteria half life or decay. Yeah, it's the same. It's the exact same idea. Yeah. Um, I know. Hey, shh, 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 shh. one of the one of the things that they're doing right now in the news is that they're talking about like the half life of uh, Chernobyl, or they're talking about yeah, they're talking about the half life of that. Uh, the, the nuclear power plant in uh, Japan, like when it will actually be like safe to live in that area. Um, I know like Chernobyl, I think, I think there's a calculation like it, um, with the amount of radiation that was released in the atmosphere at that time, um, I think it would take, I think they said like 300 years before it's, it's possibly to be like to actually house like life in that area. Um, everything else will suffer from radiation sicknesses and cancers and stuff. Uh, that's why the soil still like contaminated. Yeah, the soil will be contaminated. And so they say like that time is when the radiation will die enough where you can go into the area. But then, yeah, you still have to deal with all the, the plant life, the animal life that's still spreading from that area. So, have you seen all the videos? Yeah, yeah. oh yeah, big time. So, and why would you, why are they, how do they still live there? Without? They, um, a lot of people don't. They've just abandoned the cities. Except there's people that trespass there all the time. And some of the videos are they, creepy. Yeah, they, they did videos, I think, on like Top Gear. Top Gear went into Chernobyl at one point. They drove cars through it. They drove cars through the, the area of Japan where the, the radiation was. They had to wear hazmat suits. They could only, they could only stand there for about 10 minutes before it would be lethal. Wait, do they have, so, do they have hazmat suits on? Or? Yeah, they did. But I mean, it's not saying much but they, they drove through they, they spent less than 10 minutes they kind of walked around the place to see what was kind of left they did calculations in different places and like everything had just astronomical readings for, for nuclear uh, radiation so so that's why a lot of stuff like they're just abandoned cars abandoned houses everything's still in them but you can't touch it because it's got radiation all over it. So it's, it's really crazy. And this is the calculations that they do, because they know half-life, and it's growing exponentially, and it decays exponentially. They have like cats so. with like four heads. Uh, I know like Chernobyl, they have deer with a lot of like two heads and yeah, two faces like, and stuff. Or like so. There's six frogs. legs or something. Yeah, there's frogs at all. All right. So. Okay, last hey, last calculation here. Yeah, I just feel like for bombing. Okay, all right. Chernobyl is a melted nuclear reactor. Hey, last thing, I just want to see what you can come up with here. Chernobyl is a Okay. All right. Hey, this is our last problem of the day. This is what I want to figure out. I want to see if you guys can write this problem down your notes and see if you can figure out the logarithm that you need to type in to oh, give me yeah. the correct answer. I want to know what x is without guessing. I try to pick numbers that you can't just guess at. You're going to have to you're going to have to actually try to type it in. I want to I want to see at least up to four decimal places. It's going to be log. Four decimal places. Okay? And I actually want you to type it in, okay? Yeah. We use the circle method for this? Yeah, you'll you'll have to. Mr. Ward, is that a big number or a little number? Percentage uh, see, I'm not expecting it to be too big. How about like 3.7? 3.7 is like two petals of moose. Let me just try it. Once you have it, I want to see it. I want to see the calculations you guys are figuring out. What you need to type in. We'll go through here in a minute. I want to see the answer. Good. Hey, I got it. Okay. Good. So I just want to see it on your calculator. I want to see what you're getting. You have it written down. Again, you're using a circle method to actually figure it out. I want to see what you're coming up with. Remember, you need to write down the original logarithm, the original log, and then you can figure out how to type it. See if you're kind of paying attention to this. Yeah, I did that first, too, and I'm like, I'm just saying, well, let me figure it out. 
Yeah, yeah. Like, the same as cats, yeah. I'm pretty sure she could tell what that is. I'm pretty sure she could tell what that is. I wonder if Emily was there for the show. Yeah, that's what Emily was there for the show. Yeah, that's what Emily was there for the show. Yeah, that's what Emily was there for the show. Alright, uh, no more. Okay. Hey, Whip, I know you don't have a cat, but Trinibar, I'll see somebody else. Okay. Hey, shh, shh, shh. Okay. All right. Last, hey, last problem here. Again, when you're, when you're doing this problem, you have to do it with a circle to actually get up around. Because remember, logarithm means power. So log with base of 45 of the, the 1,500,000 the equals x. Then when you type this in, you have to type um, this 45 will drop to, to the bottom of the fraction when you have to type it in. So the 45 goes to the bottom. That's called the change of base. It's just a simple way of calculating it, so you can actually type it in. Certain calculators can just type it in exactly what you see, because you can type in the, the two numbers. They have the little boxes. You can just fill the boxes in and enter. Yeah, it's pretty nice when you have that. But otherwise, it just takes one extra step. You just divide. And it, and it should give you a number. What we're getting is about Yours is stupid. 3.73. Now, hey. That's not very big. Think about it. It was to the third power already up to a million. Um, just because the idea is that it's 45 times itself. So that's big numbers. 45 times 45. Yeah, 45, 45 times a little bit extra, right? Not quite a full 45, but 0.73 of a 45. So, and, you know, we had a bunch of decimals there, but this is the idea. We're going to be using this the next couple of days. Now, obviously, we have a lot more stuff to cover, but this was the rough introduction into it. Make sense? Okay, the rest of time today. You have time to work on your page 396. Um, make sure we're getting that done, wrapped up, all that good stuff. Uh, for those in here that still have to finish my test, this would be a good time to do that. Just saying. So that's basically saying if you have $45 in your account and you leave it in there for 3.7 days, you'll get a million. No, no, no. Because the idea is that we're not talking about rates. We're talking no. about we're talking about just what number do you put to the power that's getting there? That makes a lot more sense. That was the case. We're talking like in terms of rates, astronomically high. Actually, it'd be like three thousand. Yeah, it's something stupid. Something stupid.